Alcoholics. 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 Alcoholics.
I, I bought this movie called His Name Was Jason, 25 Years of Friday the 13th, and in it was the angry video game nerd going through Friday the 13th. It was it was hysterical. He's, oh, he's getting oh, wow. hassled by Jason, and Jason's forcing him to play the video game. And Same with Freddy. Like, I love when he tries to like get out of the room, and he's like messing with the door and the lock. Like, God damn it. God damn it. And it's funny because I just saw a movie where uh, it was called The Toolbox Murders. The one from the 70s where a girl's trying to get out of the door. and All it is is a deadbolt. And she's like, God damn it. God damn it. Like pulling on the handle. And I'm like, turn the deadbolt left. If it doesn't work, <laughs> turn right. How are you still stuck in this room? Oh, my God. Oh, man. Uh, that's another tangent, man. Have you ever seen the Toolbox Murders? No. No. I've heard about it. I've heard about it. Okay. Dude, I don't know why this movie's popular. Supposedly, it's based on a true story, but... The Toolbox Murders are a guy, an all-black, and he's killing people in this apartment complex with tools from a toolbox. Okay, sounds, okay. sounds like a pretty interesting premise. That's only the first 20, 30 minutes of the movie. The rest of the movie is he takes a girl hostage and thinks she's his daughter, and he's trying to make her his daughter by bringing her lunches and singing to her. It, he looks like fucking Bob from, Bob Pinciotti from that 70s show, and it's just... I don't know where the movie was going. I think the real life event happened that way or some shit. So I guess that explains why the movie's weird. But the only reason I watched this is because Tobey Hooper from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre did the remake in 2004. Did you see that one? No, I've, I've never seen the Toolbox Murders. Either. Completely. I'm talking completely different thing. The only thing these two movies have in common is the title. Nothing is the same. The Tobey Hooper one is about an apartment complex in Hollywood, and these people are getting picked off by this unseen killer, and this wife is suspicious. She starts pulling blueprints, and she gets into an Illuminati conspiracy about a ghost or demon or some shit living in the apartment complex that's killing people because of rituals for a thing that happened in the 1910s. I don't know. It was just as far off you can get from the original as anything. I And I found out, the movie doesn't make much sense, I found out that Tobey Hooper's production company got shut down, so he only had about 75% of the movie, and he tried to edit it to make it a full movie so everyone got paychecks, and I can tell. Oh. It doesn't make sense. The ending doesn't really make sense. The movie doesn't really make sense. There's a good movie in there somewhere, but I feel like it fell short or flew too close to the sun or something. I was going to say about uh, the video game, the 80s video game to Friday the 13th. Um, I kind of went off on a tangent. <laughs> oh, no, no. That's, it, it, it brought it back, yeah. I, I wrote it down. I'm going to check out Toolbox, Toolbox Murders. Um, yeah, let me know what you think of that. I just, I haven't had anyone that's seen it that's I can really ping off on a conversation with. And I feel like I kind of spoiled too much, but I feel like you, you got to know what you're getting into when you get into these movies because I had no idea. It's kind of like I told you, we're going to have Tim Ritter on here eventually. He made a bunch of, like, really low-budget, like, F-horror movies. Right. Uh, and one of them's called uh, Truth or Dare, and not the new remake, not the new uh, recent, it's not a remake, but not the new recent Truth or Dare movie. This one's from the 80s, and it is just so schlocky, and he did so many movies like that. And we're going to have him on, and you're going to have to do a little research before he comes on and check out, at least yeah. check out Truth or Dare. Um, it, it's... There's scenes like he's sitting around this campfire and with these women, and he's playing Truth or Dare with them. And by the way, there's like seven Truth or Dare sequels to this. Like it's yeah. just the whole thing. Um, but he's sitting around a uh, campfire, and you, the movie, you don't know if he's like really seeing people or if he's just that crazy. Um, yeah. But they're like, I dare you to uh, cut out your tongue. And he, he's every time they dare him to do something, he's like, All right, I'll do it. And he just du cuts out his tongue. Uh, then later, somehow he has a grenade, pulls it out of his ass, I guess, sticks it in somebody's mouth. And then at some point he pulls a chainsaw out of midair. Uh, it's it's nuts. Um, it sounds like Fink's killing. It's probably kind of schlocky like that. Um, but I, what I was going to tell you about Friday the 13th video game on NES, if you go back yeah. and listen to my individual chapter uploads of Church of the Divine Psychopath, you did the music. I used the music from the video games and when I first started this whole channel. That was for the first book I ever narrated, 
Church of Divine Psychopath, the first few, the first few uploads, first few chapters, I use music from the video game. Uh, and in the game, you can actually get Pamela's sweater, and you have, you don't have to, but there's a side quest where you can uh, get the sweater. Uh, you have to fight Pamela's head, and it like floats around the screen shooting lasers at you. <laughs> It may, it's it's almost as bad as the Freddy game where you're like punching snakes and spiders in the face. Yeah, uh, I've seen that Anchor Video Game Nerd do that one too. Uh, I I thought it was such a missed opportunity in Freddy's Dead whenever he's put that kid in a video he's, game. He's got the power glove. Yeah, I mean, why didn't they put him in the Freddy game? The Freddy game was out before that, you know, in the 80s. And, and that came out in 89, 90, or that's when it was being made. Um, they should have They should have used their game and uh, threw uh, Brecken into the game, Brecken Meyer. Uh, can't believe that that's who that was in the movie. Um, yeah. And I agree with, uh, I, I, on, on my other show called Slash Tracks, have you got to listen to any of those yet? Yeah. You ought to come on, come on and uh, riff on a movie with us. Yeah. Uh, uh, we had Paige, uh, she, she's working on the Fred Heads documentary. And she watched Freddy's Dead, and the Johnny Depp scene, she made a really good point. When Johnny Depp pops up and is, like, doing the whole this is your brain on drugs thing, they should have had him playing his, you know, playing his character from the first movie, not playing Johnny Depp, you know? Right. Uh, I even said, like, have all There's the blood. Come making out. an X to me. Yeah, and like, yeah, that, yeah. Uh, have all the blood come out of the TV. And, like, have him come out, you know, all dead and the clothes he's wearing when he got pulled into the bed. And have Freddy be like, yeah. I wondered where I put that, you know. Well, it kind of reminds this me place. of, um, it was a, it kind of reminds me of a short film I saw attached to that 25 years of Jason where Shelly, that got his throat cut and Jason took his hockey mask, he was, he was, an, he was an attorney for people who had been killed yeah. by Jason. He was representing all the people who had been just disfigured, so it was pretty funny because I think he had like a neck brace. He's he's a the the actor is an attorney in real life, attorney for the stars. Um, huh. Yeah, um, had an argument with him before, so I don't think he'll ever talk with us. But uh, mm. I don't I don't want to talk bad about people, but um, he's been doing a lot of videos about the lawsuit for the video game and stuff, you know, and. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of like how we talked to uh, talked about how Ghost Jason was put into the puzzle game because it was already in the game files. Right. Jason X was in the game files for Friday the 13th video game. Um, all they could do after the lawsuit hit was do bug fixes. So yeah. if there were, if there, they could have, the, the unfinished stuff for the game model could have been fixed in patches, you know, bug fixes. Yeah, they couldn't give us the the map because the map was nowhere near finished. But the the character of Uber Jason was. I just never understood that. You know, uh, they didn't want to give it to us without giving us the map. I guess, but it was it. It actually was in the game. People were playing as him, and they took him. They did a patch because they accidentally put Uber Jason in early, and like after five days, they patched him out of the game, and like two days later, the lawsuit hit. If they had just waited three days, you know, three more days before they took him out, before they patched him out, they could have just left him in and fixed him over time. And right. that's what's always bugged me. You know, I know, I know they're fans. No pun intended. Yeah. No. no yeah. It <laughs> bugged out me. Good one there. Um, it just always bugged me. You know, it's something that just don't feel right because I know that they're. The people that made the game are awesome people. They're huge fans, or they've done a great fan service with that game. It's an amazing game. Uh, I used to be addicted to it. I still play it time and again. And I have no ill will towards them. And all I did on Twitter was make a comment about if they had just left Uber Jason in when they accidentally put him in. Uh, this was like three or two years ago when it happened. I made this tweet. It's like if they yeah. would have just left him in, they could have just fixed bug fixes on him. And the guy that played Shelly took what I said personal. I wasn't even being nasty. Or, you know, I wasn't cussing or being mean. I was just making a point. And he just tore into me, you know. I was like, shit. Wow, dude. Take a chill pill. Yeah. Um, maybe, yeah. maybe he's just... 
bogged down because he had, he's had a lot of people talking about that. I mean, I, I can only imagine. He wasn't connected. Having... I mean, he was in the game, but he wasn't a developer on the game or nothing. You know, it was like, it's something like a developer should have responded to me, you know, if they were, I don't know. But, you know, it's been a long time. It would be cool to talk to him because uh, Friday the 13th Part 3 is not my favorite in the series by any, it's like one of my least favorite. Um, but I always felt bad for the Shelly character when I watched that movie. Right. And, uh, he's not a bad guy. You know, I got respect for the guy. And he's doing a lot of great work as an attorney. So, it'd be cool to talk to him one day if I can yeah. make it happen. Do you got a? I know. I know. We usually do that column. What the fuck horror? Do you have one of those tonight? No, I don't have a what the fuck horror. But I, I got. To, I was thinking about um, one that's going to piss you off a little bit. Oh. <laughs> uh, for unpopular horror opinion, you ready for it? Yeah. Okay. I love you, Sean. You're you're like a brother. But uh, my mm-hmm. unpopular horror opinion. I cannot sit through and have never finished Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 Leatherface. Um, I completely understand you on that one. Okay. It's just, to me, it's just boring and badly made, and I just... There are parts of that movie that are good, but it's equally weighed by what I don't like in that movie. And I've had multiple people... try to explain it to me and I just don't agree with it. Like, here, here's one thing, for instance. The ending is completely botched because they wanted to keep making... I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Basically, th- this is actually interesting. We've, we've touched on this once or twice. New Line Cinemas in the 90s was getting done with Freddy Krueger. They yeah. wanted their next cash cow, and I don't think they were done acquiring Jason yet because Jason would come into play with Jason Goes to Hell, yeah. Jason X. They couldn't call him Friday the 13th, Jason Goes to Hell, because of the copyrights. Well, yeah. New Line Cinemas was trying to acquire Texas Chainsaw Massacre, so that was going to be their next cash cow. You can see in the beginning, it mirrors the opening of A Nightmare on Elm Street where Freddy's making his glove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All gritty, dirty. Now Leatherface is making his mask. I talked about that before. But in this movie, in the 90s, there were massive cuts by the ratings boards about what you could do to be rated R. So the movie had multiple cuts. In the ending, Leatherface died. He got his head crushed in with a rock. There's no way he could possibly survive it. But he's alive at the end because they wanted to make more, not because it made sense. I think Benny was supposed to be killed. They brought him back because he was popular with the fans and the test audiences. I'm not. I'm just saying these are a few things in the movie that organically didn't make sense because they were worried about money. And after this movie didn't make money, New Line Cinemas dropped him like a hot potato. Um, I didn't like a lot of the Leatherface family members. I don't like that they didn't reference the first one. They didn't reference the second one. I love I mean, the second one. I love that one. Oh, that's one of my absolute favorite horror I was, movies. I, I love how campy it was. It. I was hoping they continued it, you know, could just retcon some of the ending, uh, like horror yeah. movies do all the time. But my biggest bitch about Part 3, man, is it felt like... You know how I was talking about that Jason fan film just a while ago, where it felt like some friends went out with a handy cam? I got yeah. that with some of the movie, you know, with, with Part 3, like... Like in the kitchen, like towards the beginning of the movie and stuff, it just felt like a. I don't make it very far in the movie. I know a lot of people like the movie, and and I, I like Leatherface. I love, I like the character Leatherface, not the movie Leatherface. Uh, I even like uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre: and The Next Generation. You know, well, I like. I the mean, movie. <laughs> Kane Hodder does stunts in Part Three. That's kind of cool. That's and... the reasons I try to give it to get through it, but every time I try. I'm like, I just don't want to watch it. You know, there's nothing... That well, no, okay, here, here's the main problem. I don't feel anything for the main woman or her brother. Is it her brother or her friend? I don't know, I don't I don't know, know but first it. of all, she's so bland. You don't know what her motivation is. You don't know what she's doing. The brother is boring. And you can't have boring main characters. you got to feel something. Honestly, um, Benny, I think he's played by Ken Foray, He's a survivalist, and he actually goes up against the clan because he has guns, he has survival equipment, and he's he, he, you know equipped to deal with the clan, and he fights them, and 
he meets this girl in the woods that's been surviving off animals and berries because she escaped from the clan, but she can't find her way out of the woods. There's too many traps. They work together for a bit, and I feel like they should have been the main characters of the movie, but they're not. They're secondary characters, and that weakens the movie. But there's one scene I like towards the end when Ken Foray is fighting uh, Viggo Mortensen, and he's like, what the fuck? Why y'all doing this? Why y'all doing this? And Viggo Mortensen goes, we're hungry. And he goes, ain't you ever heard of pizza? And he punched him in the face. <laughs> um, and it's funny because in Texas Chains of Massacre, the next generation, they order pizza out, which I'm like, ah, did they do that on purpose? That's, That's funny. Um, um, dude, I say sit through it, like, just sit through it once, see what you think, but maybe not rewatch it again. There are parts I liked. I kind of like the new look of Leatherface. I just didn't understand the family dynamic. They did, they retconned one and two. The music wasn't that great. It's just, I feel like this movie was new on cinema trying to capitalize on something they didn't understand. Yeah, I mean, the opening was really cool. You know? Oh, yeah. And it, it seems like the opening was the highest quality part of the entire movie. Um, I agree. But, uh, yeah, that's my unhop- un- unhopular. That's It's... <laughs> It's unpopular because Dennis Hopper was not in it. Um, no, yeah. it's un- that's not that's my well, unpopular. Speaking horror. of Dennis Hopper, I'll never forget. I was listening to the behind the scenes of the movie, and they said that Dennis Hopper's birthday happened on the set, and they surprised him with a cake. They said he got angry and stormed off into his trailer, and they're like, um, "Does anyone want to say something?" He came out screaming out of his trailer with a chainsaw and cut the cake with a chainsaw. Oh, my God. That's so awesome. Oh, uh, like, I could just see everyone like, oh, my God, we offended him. We, what, what do we do? What, did you did you offend him with a cake? I don't know what his problem is. And then he just he plays along with it. I just that, that would have been a lot of fun on the set. I love um, his scene in the uh, the shop buying the chainsaws looking for him, you know, um, weighing like, him, wait, him, him. Picking him up and... But I think the biggest problem with part three was you can't have Bill Mosley and Dennis Hopper in a movie and then make a sequel to it and not have at least one character that can stand up to them. Um, no, everyone was boring. I mean, there was the Tinker character. There was the 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 Peeping Tom character. I just I couldn't latch onto any hero or villain. There wasn't any... I mean, Viggo Mortensen was cool, but I mean, he, he didn't carry the movie by any means. I do have a what the fuck horror after all. Okay. What the fuck horror this week? What the fuck horror? What the fuck horror? 2021 for the next Michael Myers movie? Damn it. Oh, I just thought about that. Yeah. The movie's done. It's ready. You know? Okay. People, you don't want to put it on video on demand. You know what? Shit. Ghostbusters Afterlife has already been postponed. You know... We're going through shit here. Give us our Halloween kills. Video on demand. You're going to still make the money. You know, people's going to buy it. They're not going to rent it. They're going to buy it because, you know, it's like $5 more to buy it. You know? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What the fuck, horror? Okay, you got to postpone it. What the fuck, horror? A whole year? You know? Uh, sure. The it kind of reminds ha- me of... The movie's called Halloween. We don't have to see it on Halloween to enjoy it. You know, yeah. it doesn't have to be released in October. So what the fuck, horror? Why not? Well, they delayed months? Saw. The new Saw movie was delayed because they didn't want to go up against Halloween. But now Saw is next May. But oh, what God. gets me is it reminds me of. Do you remember when Seed of Chucky came out? Yeah. This was back before streaming. This was back when I went to Blockbuster. Well, I read from the Blockbuster periodical that Seed of Chucky was supposed to come out on X date and it didn't and i went town to the employees i was like hey to see the chunky come out they're like i don't know where it is it didn't come in the shipment and then it got delayed and it got delayed and it got delayed i'm pretty sure the blockbuster people hate me there was this dude who was like a vampire that worked there he always was the one that had to deal with me he's like hey dude we ain't got see the chunky and i'm like well tell me i i need to know i need to know did you like seed of chunky i like seed of I like parts of it I did forgot you, he killed Britney Spears. Did you enjoy the movie? Because I, I I enjoyed it, but did you enjoy it? I did, but not as much as some of the others. Do you hate the movie? No. There's your unpopular horror opinion right there, folks, because most people hate it. I don't hate it. 
Did you have a real I, unpopular I, I, one? What? Did you have an unpopular horror opinion for this week? I do. It's it's a bit weird. Okay. okay. I was getting into horror movies back in 2005. Now, the first ones I saw were the franchises. Scream, Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, what have you. Then yeah. came my big decision. What was going to be the first... What's, what's that movie about? Yeah. At first, it came my decision to pick one that wasn't a franchise. I picked one of the weirdest things I've ever seen in my life. It was called Skinned Deep. Okay. And it had a guy with, like, a metal mouth with, like, goggles. And it was it was a complete ripoff of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It was just, it was just a family of maniacs. The, uh, it's a family passing through this town. They end up in a family of maniacs, and the maniacs kill and torture them. That's pretty much it. What got me is that Warwick Davis, fucking leprechaun, plays an albino midget named Plates. Okay. And he kills people with plates. Okay. That's... He has a satchel on his back that he uses to kill people. He quotes philosophy before he does it. And he kills people with plates. Put him in 31 part 2 and call him Platehead. Oh my god. It's just, he steals the movie because there's horrible acting, horrible effects. It's a bad movie. But then he comes out of nowhere like overacting. Like at one point he kills this old man. Then he does like a little victory dance. And he's like jumping and swinging. And this guy attacks him from behind. And I'm just like... It, he, he... I don't know why he did this movie. He didn't need the money for this movie. But he gives it 110%, and he's a minor character in the movie. And you li- So your unpopular horror opinion is you enjoyed this movie? I, maybe because it's one of the first horror movies I ever saw, but this movie's enjoyable. It's bad, but if you know it's bad, you can just enjoy it for the poor quality, the bad acting, the bad script, the horrible... I think when the, when the, when the house explodes at the end, it's like a 360 around an exploding dollhouse or some shit. It looks so fucking fake. And but, now I'm going to tie it all to the Dark Tower. Are you ready? Yes. Remember Wolves of the Kala? Yeah. What did they What did they use a lot of to, to, to kill the wolves? Plates. Susanna's... Huh? Plates. Remember? Yeah. yeah. See, it all, it all, everything supports the beam. Everything supports the tower. Yeah, it all comes back I to the I did tell you tower. my next... Was it last episode I said my two casting choices? The two new no, ones? You didn't say them. Oh, I keep saying I'm going to say them, but I haven't yet. Okay. okay. Here are my two new casting choices. Father, was it Father Callahan? Uh-huh. Rudger Hauer. Yeah, he could he would he would have been good at that before he passed away, for sure. And you're going to be this is a weird one, the TikTok man. All right? Dolph Lundgren. Oh, that would be funny. And he's got he the has, He for has it. the physique to do that. I say bring Jamie Sheridan back to play uh, the Man in Black. I think oh, he absolutely did. from the stand. Yeah, I saw him recently on Arrow. He plays the dad of, yeah. of the Green Arrow. He could still do it, man. Uh, he would be perfect for the Man in Black. I would love it. Either that or the Crimson King. Uh, that would be a cool little way to. I, to, I think Christopher Lee would would have been perfect for the Crimson King. Oh, you know, God, before he died. Well, I mean, since Jamie Sheridan's older now, I was thinking. Yeah. It'd be a cool little nod to have him as the Crimson King. But I really think Randall Flagg would still work for him. It's weird how we didn't get much of the Crimson King in the Dark Tower. We got more of the Crimson King in Insomnia. Yeah. And Um, uh, I think it's cool how Rhea, Rhea, have you read Eyes of the Dragon? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's Rhea, Rhea from Wizarding Glass is in... Eyes of the Dragon. I didn't realize that. I read Eyes of the Dragon years ago. Yeah, Rhea, Rhea of the Coos or whatever. She's 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 uh, it's Rihanna is her name in uh, Eyes of the Dragon. So she's old as shit. Um, yeah. But, uh, it really when you realize that you're like, oh my god, she was older than I pictured. Um, Man, I'm um I'm re- I, I'm almost done with Stephen King's Rose Matter. Yeah, I haven't and... read that one. Ooh, it is really intense, man. I, I, I got so free. I had to, I had to read the ending. I know I should never do that for a book, but the main character went through so much messed up shit. If anything bad happened to her or she died, I was gonna throw the book down and quit immediately. But 
you know, I, I was pleasantly surprised at the direction it goes. I'm not going to say what happens, but it's basically about this woman who's in an abusive relationship with her husband for 14 years. He's he's connected. He has friends in high places. Basically, she thinks she's never going to get out from under this guy, but she she bolts. She doesn't even think about it. She bolts, and the book is about her rebuilding her life somewhere else and her psychotic husband hunting her down. And at a certain point, something supernatural happens, and she's like, why is this happening? And the person shrugs and goes, cause a wheel. And I'm like, oh, my God, cause a wheel. And the woman oh, and the man. woman actually talks like Re. She's not, but she talks like her. And I'm like, I can't believe this ties into everything. Yeah, it's crazy how many uh, things tie into that. Like, uh, um, lost my train of thought. I just love when that happens when we're filming. Um, so I'm going to talk about something else. So I remember what I was going to say. Um, I was going to ask you, you just watched Demon Knight recently. Um, yeah. What do you think of Jada Pinkett Smith, maybe about five, six years older than she was in Demon Knight, playing Susanna? Man, that, I think we got our pick, man. She's perfect. I even kind of picture her whenever I listen to the story on audio, because I can't read these books. <laughs> these, these, they're too long. I, I like to listen to Stephen King, the audio books. But I, I even I kind of picture her in that role, and I always picture Eddie as Jesse Pinkman from Breaking Bad. It's just that's who that's Eddie Dean to me. Um, Absolutely. I don't know anybody else. I would love to cast, uh, you know, Mr. Walter White himself into the movie somewhere, but I can't think of who he could play. Uh, Brian Cranston's such a great actor. Um, maybe put him in like a. Like Wolves of the Kala or something is Overholzer, the 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 main guy in town or whatever. But uh, I think I think yeah. Brian Cranston could fit in there somewhere. Um, I still that, want George Clooney as Oi. <laughs> I want. I'm thinking of for Jake. Uh, any of the boys from Stranger Things, I think, would be awesome playing Jake. Uh, but they're all yeah. getting old. They're all getting too old now. But like season one, Stranger Things. Um, because uh, Jake's story uh, is really is really this a big theme of the entire series. You know, there are other worlds than these. So yeah, that was our Dark Tower discussion. Uh, haven't got to, haven't got to discuss oh, what, that in a couple of weeks. One of the last things I want to bring up uh, before we end this podcast is uh, my brother sent me this video. It's Ro- Robot Chicken. Okay, I love Robot Chicken. I, I was I, I, I was laughing so hard. It's it's the Home Alone house and. Lori Strode booby trapping her house, and Michael Myers goes to Macaulay Culkin's house, and the Wet Bandits go into Lori Strode's house, and oh, oh no. my God, what happens to the both of them? I don't know if I can include it, but we can put a link. I'm sure there's a there's a clip of it on YouTube or whatever. So uh, yeah, I just I, I wasn't expecting Michael Myers to go into Home Alone, and then the Wet Bandits for Lori Strode's the house. I, I just it plays out exactly like you probably think it. Would. I love that fan theory that uh, Jigsaw is uh, oh, Kevin okay. Callister. Makes uh, sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wish I could remember what I was going to say about the Dark Tower. Oh, I know what I was going to say. I'm uh, on my re-listen. I'm up to Wolves of the Caller right now. I'm halfway through. And right. how did nobody see what was coming with Andy the robot? You know, oh. it was so obvious. You know. He, even the first time I heard it when I hadn't heard it before, I remember thinking, that robot is in on this whole fucking wolves thing. Um, I can't recommend the audiobooks enough for that. Uh, the Absolutely. books are great, but George Guidel and, uh, you know, he doesn't do as good of a job as as the, what's his name? I'm, I'm drawing a blank and Frank I love Muller. that guy. Yeah, Frank Muller. I was wanting to say Frank Miller. Uh, Frank Muller, who did books one through four, uh, they had George Guidel go back, I think, and record one through four with his voice. But Frank Muller is the voice of the Dark Tower for me. George Guidel does a great job following in his footsteps. Um, but if you've never read the Dark Tower series and you're a fan of Stephen King and you're like, well, his books are too long, or he's, or if you're like me and it's like he's too wordy and he goes on about nothing for too long, listen to the audiobooks and be sure when you listen to him, if you're listening to the first four, 
be sure you're listening to the one by Frank Muller. Um, George Guidel did do a re-record because they got him for five, six, and seven, so they had him go back and re-record the first four. But don't listen to him rec- uh, narrating one through four. Do Frank Muller finish it off with uh, with uh, with Guidel. Um, there's another book in the series that takes place between four and five um, called The Wind Through the Keyhole. Right. And it doesn't really add anything to the main story. It just it's more backstories on Roland, kind of like Wizard in Glass was. Uh, it's like a story within a story within a story. All it does is with the main characters is just kind of shows you how they got from uh, where they were after uh, part four to where part five started. Um, right. Nothing really advancing their characters any. Um, but yeah, check that out. Be sure to start with Frank Muller. Finish with George Goddell for five, six, and seven. Unfortunately, the only narrator for Wind Through the Keyhole is Stephen King himself, and he is not the greatest audiobook narrator. He's pretty bland. I would rather have George Guidel or Frank Muller, but yeah, um, it is what it is. Um, he, he doesn't dramatize as much as they did with, with the characters and stuff, Uh but yeah, check it out. Uh, went through the keyhole if you want to listen to that between uh, four and five, but you don't really have to. You can listen to it when you're done. Um, in fact, it'll probably having going from Frank Moeller to Stephen King to George Guidel will probably throw you off. So just went to the keyhole after you finish the whole story. Um, but yeah, check it out. I went on way too long with this, but that's what I was wanting to say earlier. I was like, and that wraps up our episode on Final Destination. If looks could kill. <laughs> Oh, good crap. We were going to start a new segment on the main podcast, and we didn't do it. Oh, for casting? Yeah, Cap, we're going to start this new segment on all, starting after, starting next week. Well, not next week, because that's already been casted. Um, yeah. I guess we could, like, do, uh, for the movie novelizations, who would play the characters now? Uh, but for the original Dude, stories, yeah. we're, we're going to have a new segment called Casting the Characters, where we... Uh, do what we just did here, but for the books that we talk about on out-of-print slashers. And uh, off the top of my head, I really can't cast looks could kill other than Tony Todd is death. <laughs> you know? Yeah, uh, I, I don't know maybe, many models, like, officially. Maybe, maybe Chris Hemsworth as Brute, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, this has been fun. This has been a fun episode. Uh, hope you enjoyed that little fan film thing of uh, Friday the 13th, the video game. Always really enjoyed that. Uh, thank you all so much. Uh, well, before I do that, is there anything else you wanted to say, Sean? I'm good. Okay. Save it uh, off for the next episode. Well, if there's something else you want to say, go for it, man. I'm not in a hurry. No, I mean, like, if I had anything to say. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Uh, thank you all so much for supporting the channel here on Patreon. It means a lot. I really appreciate each and every one of you, especially with the crazy stuff going on. Hope you're enjoying uh, these uh, podcasts here each week on After the Slash. And next week, we're going to have Tom McLaughlin on the podcast and here on the After Show. Please tune in for that. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the new Companion channel. I'm going to, for, for the time being, I'm going to be uploading the podcast to both channels um, until we build up that other one better. Uh, but yeah, spread the word. I uh, really want to build up. I want to have the original content channel and the narration channel. Um, yeah. So thank you all. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Uh, take care. This one didn't scare me, so I'm not already dead. That's what you think. I am dead. What the fuck? <laughs>